Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> we must go down through the unconscious mind to rise up in our spirit. Well, it's just like in this move in this world when you go to a movie and you go into the movie theater. It's a common experience to go, you pay your money, you go in, you sit down, get your popcorn, drink, get comfortable, to get lost in the movie. You know, to, it's almost like you surrender your mind and you go, take me. I want to be taken. Taken on an adventure. Taken, maybe, help me escape from my everyday life and thoughts and problems and take me into a great adventure, and and it's, it doesn't take long, you know, you, the, you sit down there, the lights go down, and the music comes up, whether you're watching Titanic, and there's this, you know, great music score, and all of a sudden the music comes on at the beginning, and oh, you're gone already, you know, you're gone from the chair, your mind's awareness is in there, and you get really fully wrapped up in the movie, forgetting it's a movie. You might as well be right there on the Titanic with Leonardo and Kate, you know, because it's, it's, it feels so real. And we could say that it's like that movie Inception where there's these layers of forgetting that you're, that it's a dream. Just layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. So at some point you need a big kick because uh, there's so many layers down that you're far away from thinking that you're dreaming. You know, it's become very, very real, in awareness, for sure, it seems very real. Uh, the Matrix, some of you remember, you know, first they have to tell Neo uh, um, about uh, the, the nature of the, the Matrix, and what it is, and what it does, it's built on control, and then they show the construct, and all this and this, but there's nothing that prepares Neo for the experience of actually going down and being in that black car, driving along the road with Trinity and, and Morpheus and, and that other woman, and they're just driving along and he's like, sees, oh, that, that's the place where they have the good noodles, you know, he's got these memory associations, I have all these memories from my life, you know, that seem so real, and he turns over to Trinity and it's like, what, what does it mean? She says very matter-of-factly that the Matrix cannot tell you who you are. These experiences, these memories, these scenes, these scenarios, none of them can tell us who we are. In fact, they were made that we would never know who we are. To get so lost in the dreaming that we would take it on as a reality and completely forget it. Uh, some of you see it sometimes more from like a, a past life perspective, you know, that, that many lies. And, and in each one, you're so, we'll say, in the lifetime, and taking it so literal, as if it's actually happening to you, that there's no question about it happening to you. There's not this sense of, okay, I'm just dreaming and dreaming, and oh, this is the way that it looks this time. There's no sense of that. There's almost like an amnesia of all the other lifetimes, that you're so focused with your attention on this specific one, that maybe the patterns underneath have been there seemingly for some time, and time itself is involved, but there's no awareness that this is just another scene, just another scenario, and it really doesn't mean anything. It's just, just another scenario of many. So, I, I think that that this is where the mind training comes in, because we are called into a, a life's calling, we're called into a purpose, we're ca called into a function that will take us through this washing of our mind, through mental practicing of these ideas, that takes us more and more into more of a surreal, dreamlike state. Lisa and I were talking about that, where like she seems to have come back to the monastery and it seems very surreal, she doesn't know anything about it, she's seeing it as if she's seeing it for the first time. Uh, you know, there's not, there's not a sense of knowing how it's running, or what's happening with it. It's like a big set, it's like a big movie set, but she's not identified with the set or the characters. Even meeting some of these, some of these people you've met different places, or California, or whatever, and it's like, you again. Oh, oh, it's you. 
you go, huh, kind of, a, it's just a, there's a newness that comes from this perspective. When we're really flowing with the Spirit, it's like, it's like there's a freshness and a newness that comes because it's not letting just the past conditioning kind of tell us who we are, where we are, what we are, what's happening. You know, that conditioning. But it takes a practice to loosen the mind from that conditioning. Otherwise, it seems like, you know, we are in the role, and in that specific role. And from a quantum physics perspective, it's like the mind has just defined itself, and now it's seeing a projection of its definition of self, and it looks just the way that it looks, and it has nothing to do with the whole or the quantum field. It's just this little, like, blinders on tiny little perspective that seems so important when you have identified with it, and then when you pull back from it, you think, huh, totally insignificant <laughs> and irrelevant. But when you're in it, you've given yourself over to it, then problems become magnified. Well, you'd think they would at least call. Did you see that look they gave? And, you know, it just gets on and on and, and gets all into a big emotional tailspin based on these little symbols that it are, are seen through this tiny little narrow perspective. So, the way out is, is questioning. And I think, you know, that's, that's what we do, you know, to learn this course requires willingness to question every value that you hold. The, you, you really take a look when you have a charge, when you have an upset, when you have a strong emotion, when you take something very seriously, it gives you a moment to, to reflect for a moment and say, oh, wow, what, what is that? It's just for a moment like, ooh, you just notice the, the contraction, and then you more and more are aware that you do have the ability to just, at that moment, to let it go. Uh, not to even analyze it or figure it out. Almost like, oh, it's just moving up and through my awareness, just so I can let it go. I don't have to figure out what's happening in the world that's causing it, because there's nothing happening in the world that's causing it. It's like a bubble, like a burp that's coming up, and it's like, let it come up and let it go out. And, and then you see that that works. You get into the rhythm of up and out, up and out, up and out. And you're surrounded by a community of up and out, <laughs> up and out, you know. Like, like at the end of the Solaris movie, we don't have to think like that anymore. The very questions that you might have asked before, how did this happen, why did this happen to me, what is the cause of this, and all this and this, you start to realize we don't have to think like that anymore. You, it just becomes more of a natural habit, up and out, up and out. So, that's the experience that happens when you practice it over and over and over, when you really find something like the Course, or some methodology, Byron Katie, or some technique, methodology, that really allows you to really get into the rhythm of that practice, and then you start to feel the value of that, and you just are drawn to it. The peace of mind that comes from that, you know, is, is spectacular. Even when you find yourself sensitized and raw, and the ego part's like saying, shut down, or guard yourself, protect yourself, defend, you just say, no, I've done that before. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to go for that anymore, I'm not going to buy that. And then you have even more experiences of how safe it is, how you're never given more than you can handle, how it's okay to s let the guard down, little by little by little. And that's the process of this great healing and awakening. Let it go, let it go.